Hey guys, guys, it's Megan and Liz, and welcome back to Noted, the podcast where we just talk about the crazy things that have happened in our careers, influencer stuff, just kind of spilling some general tea. So this episode is all about just story time. So this is a general story time about our craziest celeb stories, our craziest influencer stories. Just some of the weird stuff that we can't really put in a box. Also, like, they're not all weird. Like, some of them are cool. Some of them are cool. But we tried to pick some of the most just, how did we end up in these situations that only we could have ended up in in our very niche, weird career? (laughs) It happened a lot, too. So, I don't know. Do you want to start off with, like, celeb stories? Yeah, I think we should kick it off with with the kicker you know miss miss tay tay swift we can we could talk about taylor swift all day yeah um and she obviously had a huge impact on our career um a couple of different times so obviously the oprah thing which if you're listening to this podcast (laughs) and you don't know the oprah thing please go look it up on youtube and and also how are you here like (laughs) if you don't if you don't know the oprah thing like how are you taking the time to listen to this podcast no it's actually shocking though i feel like a lot of people actually don't know about that okay well for those of you who don't know the like one one person who doesn't know about the oprah thing um Go look it up on YouTube. Go look it up on YouTube, but you give them a rundown. So basically, when we were 16 years old, juniors in high school, uh, we thought we were auditioning for an episode of Oprah where they were doing YouTube singers. And then we got an email and everything. Yeah, I mean, it was from Harpo Harpo Studios. Studios. So it was like legit. And we were supposed to uh, um, be auditioning with the producers and they sent like a laptop and um we had to do like an internet test like and it was this whole big thing and so we got off of school we scheduled it after we got got out of school because we were in high school real high school (laughs) and uh we were sitting there waiting and it was a friday and we were cheerleaders at the time and we had to go cheer at a football game like it was an away game we had to like meet the bus at school so the producers were quote running late and, and we were sitting set up in front of this Skype kit that they yeah. had sent us. And ready we, to go. We could see ourselves in the little, one of the little boxes. And then we could just see like the Oprah logo just like shimmering in, in the other box. And that's all we could see. And we, and my mom was corresponding with the producers. Yeah. And, and she was like, you know, the, these girls, like they can't miss these, like, this game like they'll get kicked off the cheerleading squad and we were waiting it wasn't like it was 20 minutes no, it, it, was it had a, been it was like two hours i think yeah probably totally around two hours so we're sitting there and the producers one of them texted my mom and was like trust me like you you want to keep waiting basically yeah. and my, my mom didn't tell us this she was just like stick it out guys like it's Oprah. Like, <laughs> yeah, this is the biggest. This, this might be the make or break of your career. Like, you can, yeah, you can hang and, out. And we knew that, but you know, high school's such a bubble, and you're like, we were just trying to do the right thing. Yeah, and we're goody too. Sh- yeah, yeah. So we're sitting there, and all of a sudden, Oprah pops on the screen. Not the producers. And at first, we both thought that like they'd made us wait so long they were <laughs> going to play an Oprah rerun yeah. to like entertain us. We were like, "That's nice." And then she goes, "Hello, Megan and Liz," and like everything you see after that is our genuine reaction to Oprah coming on our computer screen in Edwardsburg, Michigan. <laughs> yes. So then, what happens with Taylor is Oprah says. Well, you know, we saw your cover of White Horse by Taylor Swift and we really loved it. And we were like, wow, thank you, Oprah. Oprah. (laughs) And then she goes, and then she goes, oh, you know, someone else saw it and wants to say hello too. And it pans over and it's Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. She goes, hey, Megan and Liz, it's Taylor. And then uh, obviously we scream our heads off. Yeah. And then she invites us to her concert in Chicago, literally the next night. The next night. And... Um, our whole reaction was, was genuine. And so the very next day, uh, Oprah sent a limo and producers to our house. The whole thing was filmed too. And I like really wish that we could get that footage somehow, but it's probably like locked away forever. But it was like us meeting Taylor, us meeting her mom. Her mom gave us like a whole tour of the backstage and this was in Chicago. So it was all state arena, I think. 
And they set us up at the Omni Hotel, which was probably the nicest hotel we'd ever stayed in. And they yeah. gave us like food vouchers. Yeah. Like Oprah like hooked us up. Yeah. But ta- but meeting Taylor, well, let's just talk the whole experience mm-hmm. and being on Oprah truly set off our career. Like it gave us some cred that at the time, no other like YouTube creators yeah. had because everyone else was just, oh, you're in this weird corner of the internet. But it, <laughs> it, it, put us in a category that was like, yes, we're in this weird corner of the internet, but we've been recognized on a scale that is... Like a national scale. Yeah, a national scale. It was a a complete game changer. That's how, like, a few people... Like, we got some radio interviews from that. Yes. Like, we got some management contacts. I don't think that's how our management label actually ultimately ended up finding us, but it was on our page, so it made us look good. It was a huge building block huge. in the terms of our career so and that's why taylor swift <laughs> and meeting her for the first time let's talk about that we talked about it a little bit on the fluently forward podcast yeah. about what it was like to meet her in person for the first time she's so tall she was very tall well we're really short yeah i and guess i just wasn't expecting i also didn't think i ever realized how we were short yeah for the earth until you meet somebody that's like not yeah <laughs> and She was obviously so kind and so nice. And the whole thing was filmed for the Oprah show. So, I I mean, of course, I think she's a nice person anyways, which we will circle back to that. There was a point where we met her where it wasn't filmed and she was just as kind. But at this point, it was like being filmed and we were just like, oh, my gosh. I don't remember a a drop of it, to be quite honest. No, I don't either. I know. I wish we had that footage. Like, I blacked out. Yeah. Um, But... Her appearance, we kept saying she looked like a wax figure. Yes. And that's just one thing we kept saying to each other. We're like, she looks just like a wax figure. Yeah. And looking back now, we kind of think that she may have had Botox. I don't know, though. She was young. She was young, but she was so in the industry. Yeah. Y- you never know. And that was before Botox was like kind of talked about a lot. and stuff. Yeah. Too. And she was dating... Taylor Lautner. Yes. Oh my gosh. And we were walking <laughs> back to our seats in the pit, which I'm forever spoiled by Taylor Swift shows because we saw the Fearless tour in the pit. That is so crazy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we were like, walk- they were walking us back to our seats and we saw this little golf cart pull up with Taylor in the front. And then like Taylor Lautner was like on the back of the golf cart yeah. and he was like, and we like waved because yeah. we're Twilight fans at this point. Like, this that's is so peak. embarrassing. We should have played it cool. We, <laughs> Megan, we were 16 year old <laughs> high school cheerleaders from Edwardsburg, Michigan. Like, no. We were going to wave to Taylor Lautner. Yeah, we were going to wave to Taylor Lautner. <laughs> and Megan took so many photos of Taylor Lautner. Oh my gosh. We will post them. Yeah. They're so like I zoomed so far in on my little Nikon cool pics camera. And then just a little fun fact for the for the listeners. Um, <laughs> I was in charge of uploading all of the photos. <gasps> oh my God. I forgot. From this life changing once in a <laughs> lifetime event. I uploaded them all from my little cool pics to our iMac. And I somehow managed to delete all of them somehow mom recovered them yeah she did some crazy computer magic and recovered every single photo but you guys to this day i think i won't like i cannot handle the responsibility of anything important it no it's just it's just scarred you for anything digital yes i'm like because i will never forget that i deleted every photo of us with taylor swift at the taylor swift concert i think i cried you definitely cried. Yeah. I cried. My mom probably <laughs> cried. Like, it was, it was absolutely devastating. Event. Turn of events. It was, oh, and then not to mention, in the next morning, I awoke with the flu. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. No, it was the craziest time. She was sick as a dog. Uh, it's never been that sick in but my entire life. But it was a quick life. turnaround for like the show because you were still sick when the show actually aired. Or, yeah, because you were at the doctor. I watched watched the Oprah show (laughs) by myself in the house because my mom and Megan were, like, at the doctor because Megan was so sick. Never been that sick in my life? Yeah. And Liz was, like, famous at school. Oh, my gosh. And I missed it all. I felt so bad that you missed it. It was truly... Oh, my gosh. Like, because they played it in... A bunch of classes they like brought the tv and like played the episode and then they also like did a loudspeaker announcement about it to the whole school and i was just at home rotting yeah <laughs> and all of the all of the kids were like wow like i saw you on tv and i was like thanks <laughs> <laughs> that's 
so cool. <laughs> but anyway, so that's our first experience with Taylor Swift. Do you just want to stick with Taylor Swift? Since yeah. The second one was, let's see, that was 2009. So what, five, no, oh, three years later. That is not that long. That's really not that long. Oh my gosh, is that really only three years later? Yes. In 2012, when we were playing the iHeartRadio show, and this picture, again, you've seen it. If you follow it, followed us for any amount of time, you've seen this picture of us with Taylor. Um, it was the second... We had already performed the night before, and yeah. it was the second night, and Taylor was performing the second night at the iHeartRadio Music Festival, and our manager came to our hotel room and was like, listen... Listen. I can get you into Taylor Swift's rehearsal for and, I Heart like that night. And of course we were like, yeah, we'll go be creepy and sit. But there were other people in there too. Yeah. And it was an opportunity that we were like, I mean, if, if yeah. we didn't love Taylor Swift before, which we did. Yeah. This was at her, when, when was, was this? This was, this was right when I think I Knew Your Trouble had just come out. Yes, I think you're right. I don't yeah. think Red had come out yet. No, it was, it was like about to. Yeah. Yeah. So this was right when red was about to come out and we didn't anticipate to meet her again like we were just no. lucky enough to sit in her rehearsal which was a huge deal but then i saw our manager grover he was chatting with was it mark mark they yeah. were like chatting like in a secretive way yeah. and liz and i were like why are they being weird and then grover's like let's just go backstage let's just go backstage and then we're like standing back, back there and then Taylor's like back there. Yeah. And she was talking to somebody else and we were just like, oh my God, this is so cool. Like we can see her like up close. Yeah. And then she like walks, walks up to us. Yeah. And we were just like. <laughs> and she was just like, hey girls, like so good to see you. Like congratulations on everything because she knew that we had like won the iHeartRadio contest and everything. And she, <laughs> and she said, I love your song bad for me. Yeah. She said, I hear it all the time on the radio in Nashville. And she went, she went, Oh, Oh, feels so good, but just so bad for me. Like Taylor Swift sang us our song. Truly an out of body experience. And that is something that I'll keep forever. Forever. I will keep that in my pocket. I will hold it close to my heart. Margo will know about it. My grandchildren will know about it. I won't shut up about it. No. Ever. So, we should yeah. bring it up more, honestly. And then she, we took a picture and we took another one and she, we like showed them to her and she was like, <laughs> she was, well, I think it's just one of those days. <laughs> And I was like, felt. So she didn't love the photo. She didn't love the photo. Yeah. <laughs> but sorry, Taylor, we posted it. Yeah. Everywhere. <laughs> she still looked great. Like she on. did. She but did. it was a nice moment for her to be like human. Yeah. And that's what I, what I wanted to say earlier where it was like before when it was for the Oprah cameras, it was like anybody for the Oprah cameras can be nice. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, these girls, can't be Oprah, blah, blah, blah. But this time was purely she just wanted to be a good person and yeah. wanted to be nice to us. And it was on like an industry level where like she didn't really know us. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, she could have been like, oh, I have to go or something. Yeah, like she absolutely. didn't have to do that. But she did. But she did. And she like made it so personal. Mm -hmm. And we are fans forever, forever because of that. We would have been fans forever before that. But because of that, it's just forever. locked in, locked in. Okay, talking about another person that we met that was somebody that really shook us. I can tell you, I think I know where you're going to go. Yeah. Is it Katy Perry? It's Katy Perry. Um, <sighs> this was, again, a situation that like we were on the same level, which is so crazy to me. Yeah. We, we were recording in Conway Studios, which is where... Taylor records. It's where Katie records. Literally, like everybody records at Conway. Conway Studios in LA, and um, we were there recording a radio edit for our song "Release You," which is a song that we wrote with Max Martin and Shellback. And um, if you don't know, like the Radio Disney edit, it's basically we had to say things that were a little cleaner. Yeah. So we, we just, listened back to that the other day, and I was like, that's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, so we were just there recording vocals. Like, we were not writing. We were not doing anything crazy. We were there for, like, maybe an hour, and we were just sitting in, like, the – not the vocal booth, but the part where you just, like, hang out. And um, we see Katie walk by, and we're like, 
oh my gosh it's katie perry and, and it was it was just shell back that day wasn't it i don't think yes. max was in there yeah yes um so we see katie perry and and show back literally he sees us lose lose our shit yeah. like he sees us you know and didn't he call her in there or did she just walk she in she just walked I in i think she knew because this at the time this was I mean, this was Teenage Dream, Katy Perry. This was, she was literally still on Teenage it was, Dream. Yeah, it was like, she was recording, uh, Prism? Prism, yeah. So yeah. like, Roar, I think maybe had been out or she was about to put out Roar. Yeah. But she had worked with Max and Shellback. So she was like friends with them. Yeah. And I think that she knew that Shellback was there. So she was like, oh, I'm just going to go say hi really quick. And so she like walks in the studio. <laughs> we're, our, like, <laughs> we're standing there like frozen. <laughs> I, Here's the thing. Like, with Katie, we weren't expecting it. With no. Taylor, we were expecting it. So I think we could, like, ground ourselves a little bit and be like, no. okay, like... We you went know. into that studio that day thinking we were just doing the radio Disney edit yeah. and then we were going to leave. Like, we did not know who was there. Um, But, yeah, she she walked in and we had brought Max and Shellback these little, uh, like, release you gifty things yeah, with, like, like little the cover gift. on it. And Katy Perry, like, looks at them and she's like, oh, Megan and Liz, you guys are blowing up right now. <laughs> I, what did I say? We were just probably just like, thanks. Thanks, <laughs> thanks Katy Perry. I, I, and then we had to go in the booth and record and record. And, and we couldn't. We, couldn't. We, we literally were screaming like, like to ourselves, just like, <sighs> yeah, in the booth. And oh my gosh. <laughs> and then also Katy was wearing socks and flip flops. She was like so casual. She was so casual. Like very little makeup. She was just like, oh, don't mind this situation. Like talking about yeah. her socks and flip flops. And, um, it was, she was very, very nice. Very, very nice. So yeah, that was, that was, a uh, the coolest unexpected yeah. icon meeting. Yeah. We're just say. talking like the heavy hitters in, in our realm were Taylor Swift and Katy Perry. You know who else we saw at Conway that I, completely forgot about who Cher Lloyd Cher Lloyd we met her a few times but this one I vividly remember because she was outside smoking, smoking. <laughs> she was like outside I mean everybody knows she smoked uh I don't know if she smokes anymore but uh yeah she was like sitting outside just like hanging out and she was just like smoking. no makeup sweatpants just like smoking and I was just like you're Cher Lloyd but we were <laughs> but we were so sheltered at the time like to see anybody smoking we were just like whoa especially Cher Lloyd because she was our age yeah and she was like in our heads just like really really pretty and like yeah. clean and like not that smoking makes you like dirty but just like yeah and not it's like clean and like a yeah like a good girl way in a good girl way yeah yes exactly thank you and we yeah. were just like she smokes oh what? my god she's up like she's a bad girl yeah. like in <laughs> but she i will tell you what she is absolutely beautiful oh, like yeah. in person like i remember like standing next to her and being like wow i feel ugly I feel like an ogre <laughs> yeah, i feel like an ogre <laughs> <laughs> okay so now we're gonna go into just random how did we get here scenarios that sound made up but i swear to you they are not <laughs> um what are we gonna kick it off with um let's talk about the zero g plane this was recent this was a recent thing for us um and yeah let's let's put this into perspective i was in an airport the other day and i heard somebody talking about a zero g plane no, really did i tell you this no oh it was somebody who was like right in front of me and they were like yeah you know they have those zero gravity planes where you can um experience zero gravity like you're an astronaut like i wonder what that's like and i literally said excuse me ma'am i've been on one <laughs> no uh, you did yeah, not I, 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 yeah and i was just like i've been on one and she was like what <laughs> so random and so strange that we have been on a zero gravity plane let me tell you the worst experience of my entire life not really like it was really cool like i'm like the for the first five minutes it was definitely one of the coolest things i've ever done yes. i just barfed the whole time <laughs> here's the thing here's the thing about the zero g plane you've got to know going in that like y you've got to be that kind of like vivacious adventurous person and yeah. you've got to know it's like those people who are like 
climb Everest. You know, they're like, yeah. I don't care about the physical repercussions. Like it's all about the, <laughs> the view from the top where, where it's like, it's the same experience with the zero G plane. It's like, you got to not care about the physical re- repercussions and you've got to have, and you just want the experience. And that was not us. Well, but see, here's, here's my beef with it is that some, some girls on there, or I should say some of the people on there were, were the me's and they just barf the whole time. But I, I barfed as well, but not until the end. Exactly. But see, a lot of the people were just fine. Like <sighs> half the plane, I feel like was like, I didn't get sick at all. Yeah. And I was like, but I should have known that because I get really motion sick, like in general. Yeah. And see, and that's the thing is like, if you want to do a zero G plane, you have to be comfortable with your motion sickness and know your your threshold of yeah. motion sickness. I mean, even like my husband, he said, he's like, when you guys said like, oh, I'm going to go do a zero G plane. He's like, I really kept it to myself. But I was like, you get car sick in the front seat of my Ford Explorer. Like, why are you going to go to a zero G plane? <laughs> so let's talk about how this came to be. Um, this was obviously a content creator, influencer, event activation yeah. campaign whatever you want to call it this is for dr pepper zero sugar um so we i did love a dr. zero pepper. zero g plane ride yes a zero g with the zero genius marketing. genius marketing tru- yeah. truly honestly and yeah. like i love dr pepper so do I. who doesn't who doesn't love dr pepper so we got this call from somebody who we who we used to manage us yeah and she just like had this opportunity come across her desk that she was like i think y'all would be good for and we were like okay and basically they were like here's the budget here's how much we're gonna pay you and it's like next week wasn't it quick yeah no it was a quick turnaround yeah yeah um and we were like okay we're, we're gonna do it so we flew out to la and we just like were told to show up at this location which was the which this is another like strange little little cherry on top was was to meet at the beverly hills aston martin oh, dealership yeah, because, because the aston martins took us to yes. the airport where the zero g yes. plane was like taking off from yeah that was cool it was very cool but like they also wanted us just to talk about this new aston martin suv so <laughs> so, so picture this you like fly in you go to your hotel you get the information it's like meet at the aston martin beverly, beverly hills, hills dealership, dealership at like 6 a.m or yeah. something yeah so we're like okay so we show up and we see all these people walk in. We've got to talk about who walked in. Okay. Um, Tyler Cameron of Bachelor fame. Such a nice, such a nice guy. The sweetest man. Truly so sweet and more attractive in person, if you'd even believe it. For sure. Um, he was very, very kind. Very kind. But we didn't, we had no idea who, who else was going to be here. Yeah. You, sometimes influencer things like that, they'll tell you who else is going to like be at the activation yeah. or who is like part of what you're doing. And this one, we had no idea. We didn't know if it was like four people. We didn't know if it was like three people. So we didn't know if it was 20. We didn't know. We, it could have been just us. Yeah. We, we, we truly we had no, no idea. idea. Um, but this, I will say we were not qualified (laughs) (laughs) if we're just talking pure numbers here we were bottom of the barrel you know what but we were in the barrel but we were in the barrel and that's all that matters (laughs) we were at the very bottom but we were there no bottom of the barrel is still in the barrel it is it (laughs) is um i don't think that there's a single person there who had less than a million followers besides us no, I mean, I think some had like, I mean, it was like 600,000. Yeah. I'm like, combined, co- combined, we had all, we had like 600,000. <laughs> yeah. Combined, we really almost got there. Yeah. Um, but it was just, it was, it was wild. Um, so yeah, we show up and then like, we, we should have known about the zero G experience. Um, when we get there and they're handing us out boxes of plain bagels. Yeah, they're like, it's good to do the zero G plane. If you oh, have some food on in your stomach, if you have a good carb, like a plain carb in your stomach, and we're like, and okay. they're also handing out Dramamine. <laughs> <laughs> and they're handing out Dramamine. Like, like it's can- they're, like it's M&Ms. They're like, here, you want Dramamine? You want Dramamine? And, <laughs> this is before we would get on the plane. Yeah. And then they're talking to us about 
like how they have ginger gum and ginger chews and we're like, and like what to do if you feel like you're gonna be sick and <laughs> all of us were just like this won't happen to us yeah they're like if you feel like you're gonna be sick stop and raise your hand so that you can so one of the instructors can like come over and give you a sick bag yeah and and we both it i'm um, no and they said they said at the end and this is that this is why i'm going back to say the zero g plane <laughs> adventurers like you got to go in knowing yeah. because they like, said that our plane it was a record <laughs> number of people who got sick <laughs> but it's because we're influencers it's because it was a plane full of influencers like if, oh. and we weren't like these adventurous people who would pay which i think it's around ten thousand dollars i think per it's person not cheap if you if you want to do it which of course we didn't have to pay for it because that was paid for by the brand yeah but it's around ten thousand dollars if you want to do the zero g experience but see adventurers would do that and they yeah. probably wouldn't get sick because they'd have like so much adrenaline and like it's just a different breed of human it is it yeah. is but again it was like a really cool experience like I really wish that I had a stronger stomach because the first two little like dives that we did were so cool. Like yeah. I was so upset that like it got ruined. My yeah. body ruined it for me. <laughs> but yeah. but yeah, that's the zero G experience. Can say that we've done it for Dr. Pepper. Yes. This one I didn't realize was so crazy until I recently lo was looking back at my photos. Okay. And it was a flyer of a performance that we did for a grammy after party okay so that was in like 2015 or 16 somewhere around there hosted by emrata did we even see her i don't know like that's the thing that's why i'm like so like wait like it was hosted by emily radikowski like we we played in a Grammy after party hosted by Emily Radikowski, and we played that show just like us and our guitar. Yes, and I think we played one song. Like they flew us out to play one song at this random little like nightclub. I'll have to find the flyer and and we'll and we'll post it. Okay, but isn't that the most random thing? Actually, you know what? Now that I'm thinking back to that, I do remember her like coming out on stage. But the thing is, is like, we just didn't really realize, I think, well, she wasn't nearly as famous as she is now. Definitely. Not. Um, but like saying that now to, it sounds like two truths and a lie to be yeah. like, no, we, <laughs> we played, we played a show with Emily Raddick house. She was like the host. She was the host. Um, yeah, that was a weird one. That was a weird one. And so that was just kind of like a weird thing that I saw recently. That whole party, I remember just being like. Hmm. This is weird. Yeah. And that's a, just another prime example of like, we were flown out to yeah. New York City, the whole shebang for one song. To be for, And this Grammy after party, like, I don't even remember there being like industry people there. No, it was literally just people watching the yeah. Grammys. It was so huh. strange. Oh my God. Is that the one? That's totally the one where they put us up at the W in Times Square. Oh, was it? Yeah, because I like I remember I always wanted to stay there, and we had like a view of Times Square. That was actually cool, like yeah. in a weird New York touristy way. Like that was cool. I'll have to look back at the flyer and see like the details. But yeah, it's a very strange one. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of New York, let's talk about the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Oh my gosh! I mean, which time? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I I feel like we've talked about the first time a decent amount, but so let's like do a condensed version yeah um pretty much you're on a bus in the morning yeah. at like four in the morning you could be full glam the whole shebang well actually you know what everybody stays at the london hotel yeah which is cool which is cool and it was the first time that we were ever paparazzi <laughs> yeah because and people didn't those paparazzi did not know who we were and they didn't care who we were no but it was because all of the stars who didn't live in New York or whatever stayed at the London. Yeah. And it was, there's just a crowd of people outside, no matter what. It was fans, it was paparazzi, just mm -hmm. like waiting for people to like come out. Yeah. That was, that was cool. We and spent, it was early. It, yeah. And, and they were there like the night before too. Oh yeah. For like the rehearsal. They were there for like the day before. Yeah. They were there ever since we like checked in. Um, we spent our 19th birthday. 20 our 20th. 20th birthday the day before the thanksgiving yeah. day parade which was so fun it was so fun um talk about like the bus experience and who was on it with us because i remember honestly like i was probably sleeping on the bus <laughs> <laughs> like, 
<laughs> no, we probably did have to get up at like 3 a.m. One thing about me, I don't know if I've talked about this a lot, but like looking back, I would just sleep wherever and whenever i had the opportunity because like i'm a sleeper so like that's a situation prime example of it was like a waiting situation like that i would be sleeping so i probably did take a little cat nap so i don't know if i remember who was on that bus all i remember is there was a celebrity chef on our bus okay yes 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 yes, it was i want to say sandra I don't know. It was a celebrity chef. And I just remember being like, cool, a celebrity chef. But all the buses were parked like right behind each other. And they like in Central put, Park. Yes. And they like put you on. They'd be like, oh, you're on this bus. And like, so you didn't know who was going to like pop up on your bus. Yes. Basically, like you knew who was playing the parade. Um, and then they would just come and get you one at a time and like bring you to your float, which was that was so cool. That was so like, cool. Seeing the float you were going to be yeah. on. It was like, whoa. And also... Again, I think we've talked about this, but there is no option to live sing. No. They're just like, no, you're lip syncing because they don't have, I mean, you're on a float. Like they can't like mic you up and like get the sound right because you literally pull up to the same spot. Like it's. And maybe they do now, but I mean, this was 10 years ago. No, I mean, this past year they they were lip syncing. Yeah, I can tell they're lip syncing. Yeah. But yeah, there's no option to, to really sing. Literally right before you go on, they just like send up the little people like the nbc people they hand you the mics i had a hairbrush in my pocket mm-hmm. and some lip gloss mm-hmm. and then also you don't actually perform for the cameras no until the very end so you go through the entirety of new it's york two City, hours two hours in the freezing cold like waving to all these people and also you know what was i thought was so funny was you weren't allowed to sing or lip sync or play the song on your float t- um, that you were singing on the parade. Oh, really? I don't remember yeah. that. So, like, I remember we were really bummed because we were like, oh, if you hear my daughter in the background, I'm so sorry. Um, we were like, oh, that's a bummer that we can't have Bad For Me playing on our float because that's how people would know, people us. know us. Yeah. And I remember, like, our management was, like, a little bummed about that. But um, I remember <laughs> everybody was looking at us oh, yeah. with an expression of... Who is that? (laughs) Never forget the girl that said, is that Taylor Swift? Literally, I saw her mouth clear as day. Taylor Swift? Because my hair was like blonde and curly. Yeah. Don't disregard the brunette standing next to me. Like, yeah, no, um, who's she? Who's she? (laughs) Um, yeah, no one knew who. We got a few like little like, like, we got like, oh, you know, like it's Megan and Liz. But, um, for the most part, it was humbling. And it was also really hard because we were the same height as the children on our float that were standing next to us. So we didn't stand out. (laughs) It was, yeah. It was, no, but we were standing like, um, for the actual parade, we were standing more towards the front yeah, on but, our own little ledge. But for the performance, we were on the side with all these gorgeous children. Like our height. Our mm-hmm. height. Yeah. So, yeah. And then they just hand you the mics. You lip sync. And also, when they stopped that float, I was I could have gone fanny over tea kettle. Yeah. Like, it was, it was like, <gasps> and like yeah. now whenever I watch the parade, I like watch to see if people like stumble. Yeah. And a lot of people do. Yeah. And also, it's a condensed version of your song. So you are not playing a full version of your song. It's you, like a weird chopped version. And you have to like study it. Yeah. Oh, I remember being so nervous. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Because you're lip syncing and it's a different version of your song that you've been playing a million times. It's literally pieces like taken out and like it's, it's weird. Yeah. Um, very strange. But we had a really good parade day though. Oh, the weather was gorgeous. Yeah. I think for the second one, it was nice, too. Yeah. Yeah, so the second one we went, we were, like, Snapchat correspondents mm-hmm. for Macy's, I believe. Yes. Um, And that was, like, just really fun because we got to go, like, where the floats were and where the balloons were and just kind of, like, bop around and, like, talk to people who were there and like we got to meet al roker (laughs) we did um that was really fun and just like take content yeah we were just like taking pictures like behind the scenes pictures of the floats and like all that and for that we like got paid yeah which was crazy yeah that whole trip was really fun and we brought i brought wit and we brought our mom yeah and we like hung out and it was on thanksgiving and it was really fun yeah because you forget that like it is on Thanksgiving. Yeah. So, um, for the first time that we did the parade, was such a weird one. We had a, this is another situation that's like, wait, what? Yeah. Um, we drove to Philly 
Well, no, we took the train to Philly. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we took the train to Philly because we had a show the next day. Yes. Or, yeah, it was the next morning. Was it the next morning? Yeah. At the ice skating rink. Okay, yeah. So we had, <laughs> we had a show the next morning in Philadelphia. So we booked a reservation. On a ship. At a restaurant <laughs> on a ship in Philadelphia. And that was our Thanksgiving with yeah. our mom. It was, I remember it was really dark in there. It was very dark, but I remember the food was good. Yeah. But it was just like the most this random. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Oh, one last thing about the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Um, we were invited the first time to go to the balloon blowing up party, the balloon filling party. Oh, yeah, that was fun. Which is like, they don't actually like blow up the balloons. And I'm sure they do somewhere, but like it was just like a pre party. It's just basically. a party to it's celebrate party, it. Yeah. <laughs> And um, this was at a time when we were going to tour with the Olympic gymnasts for the Teen Choice Tour. And this tour ended up never happening, which is so sad. I still don't really know why. Because they didn't end up touring either. Like no. It wasn't like we just didn't get picked. It was just like the tour in general just like didn't happen. Yeah. But it was like basically we would have done music while they were doing Gymnastics. gymnastics in like these small arenas and it would have been awesome it would have been fun um but they were all there and like we have pictures of them like us with them and like that was so awesome yeah that was cool let's talk about because this is a fever dream that i literally brought up to megan recently i was like did this happen <laughs> and there was a period of time when we were in los angeles where we had a reality show pilot and we at one point went to a meeting with Ashley Tisdale's production company. Literally, I <gasps> no, and Ashley Tisdale was there. Yes, we had a meeting with Ashley Tisdale, <sighs> and for for whatever reason, I like don't have a very clear memory of it, and it feels like it bothers me that I don't because that is such an iconic thing. I mean, I I don't remember her like. She she was she must have been nice. Like I don't remember. I re I have a I have a snapshot of that meeting because she was sitting directly across from us, mm -hmm. and I remember I was fangirling like yes. I tend to do, and I remember I was I I was trying not I was actively trying to not look at her. Yes, because I didn't want to seem like a fangirl. Yes, yeah. So that, that was one's crazy random. And that was a random time too, where we had that yeah. reality show pilot. Does she even have that production company anymore? Yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to Google it. It was her and her sister. Yeah. Um, but that was a big moment for us. We were like, oh my God. Yeah. Okay. I would love to kick this next one off, please. So when we lived in LA back in 2013, the agency that we were with, uh, they sent us out on a lot of auditions, which was actually really fun. Like auditions for TV and movies and just random stuff. And when we say agency, what we mean is they represented us as far as like booking our live shows. Yeah. So that's what their main job was. And then they were just like, oh, you know, if we see any, they were, they, well, I think they asked us, they said, are you interested in acting at all? And we were like, sure. Sure. And so they were like, okay, well, if you know, you get any auditions, like we'll pitch you, you know, if you get any, mm -hmm. like you can go. We're like, great. So we got like a few over the time that we lived in LA. Um, but my most cherished one that I will, again, my children will know about it. My grandchildren will know about mm -hmm. it. Um, was for San Andreas, the movie starring The Rock. Yes. Um, and Alexandra Daddario. Yes. <laughs> she got the part. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, uh, that was so cool, especially because that's like one of my favorite movies now. Like, I just like, I'm a disaster movie girly. And uh, when I walked in, it was like a legit, because mm -hmm. I mean, it was like a big movie. Well, I remember when you got this audition. Yeah. Our managers were like, you need to see an acting coach, not because you were a bad actress, just because it was that big of an audition. I like, did. Oh my God. I did go to an yes, acting you coach. Did. It was because it was that big of a deal yeah. that like, and you had somehow like skipped the short list. Like the, the casting director actually really wanted to see you, which if you don't know anything about acting, like that's a huge deal. Like, yeah, I know that. yeah, and it was a huge deal. And that's why everyone was like, you need to see an acting coach 
because you've never been in on in an audition before. no like a real audition like yeah. that so that was so cool like i walked in signed in um but as we were walking in liz came with me of course naturally and as we were walking in aj mashaka of, of ali and aj, AJ <laughs> was walking out because she was auditioning for the same part <sighs> that was a top tier moment in my life because I was like, oh my gosh, I am on the same playing field as AJ from Allie and AJ. And like, there would be no Megan and Liz if it weren't Mm -hmm. for Allie and AJ. Yeah. So I, I hold them. I still hold them up here. Mm -hmm. So seeing her walk out, I mean, as if I wasn't like already nervous enough walking into this situation. Oh, you hadn't done it yet. No. Because I think I stayed either in the car or like, no, 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 I wasn't in the car. You were, I, you were like in the waiting room of the waiting room. Yeah. Because I, because I saw her. I yeah. remember seeing her too. But remember, I wasn't. It was, there were like chairs outside of the room. Yeah. And you were in, you were, you sat in those chairs. Yeah. So I like walked in and then when I signed in, I saw her name on the list. Oh my gosh. And it, honestly, you know. <gasps> Alexandra Daddario might have been in there, but, but we like, didn't know her she, back then. She had only done, I think, Percy and the okay, yeah. uh, whatever. What was it? Percy per- Jackson? Yeah, that yeah. one. Um, so uh, she wasn't really like her yet. So yeah. she uh, might have been in that room for all I know. Stop it. Um, but yeah, I was sitting there. I went into the the casting and I, I read the scene. I still have the uh, script somewhere. I kept that. And it was the scene uh, in the movie where she's in San Francisco and she's like with the brothers in the radio or in the old electronic store. And I remember reading that. And um, I mean, they don't give you much in an audition. They're just like, thank you. But um, well, what was the you got feedback? I got feedback. Though. They said they said we really liked her. We're just looking for somebody with more experience because i mean <laughs> it was your first audition Literally my first audition and this is like I a multi-million dollar budget film with i don't the think rock. you had a headshot no i didn't no you didn't have a headshot no. you didn't have like a resume no yeah so but that was like so cool yeah that's 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 a cool one yeah yeah i love that one i'm like uh, every day i'm like was she in the room alex denaria Maybe you should just hold hold it that she was. Either way, Aja Mashaka was, so. Yep. Okay, I think next we should talk about the Kids' Choice Awards, where we met One Direction. Where we met One Direction. That was so cool. That was also, do you remember, after the Kids' Choice Awards, they like, oh my god, before was weird, too. We met Ariana Grande that yes. day. Yes! Yeah! <laughs> they, so before, they brought us in that room with, like, all the little Nickelodeon stars. Yes. Like Ariana was in there. Jeanette McCurdy was in there. Yeah. No, I remember talking to Ariana Grande. This is when she had the red hair and because she was on Victorious. Yeah. And I remember just like being like, oh, like, isn't it so fun to be here? And she was like, yeah. She's like, I kind of want to go home. <laughs> like, I, I like remember her saying that. I remember her just being like, yeah, like, I kind of just want to go home. Like, I'm, yeah, like, I'm kind of ready to go. Like, and, like, she was nice, but, like, yeah. that was her vibe. Yeah. Um, so we met Ariana Grande that day. Yeah. And then we saw Justin and Selena. We did not yes, meet them, but, but that we was saw the them after. That was after. We got, sh- keep, we kept getting, like, is it because there, there were shuttles? I think that was w- what it was. Well, we were also, like, guests of, um, Fred. Oh, yeah. Who, if you don't remember Fred um, from On YouTube, YouTube. Like, Iconic. we had the same digital management at the time. So he and he had Lucas. Lucas. Yeah. yeah. He had um, a show with Nickelodeon at the time or like wasn't talks of having a show with Nickelodeon or something. He had an in with Nickelodeon. Yeah. Um, so we were with him. So I think that because we were we were talent, quote unquote. Yeah. Like we were ushered in with all of the talent that was so cool yeah. and and yeah justin and selena i remember they walked through that room i'll never forget they it. were like holding hands yes and like everybody in there even was like oh my god it's justin and selena yes and i think kylie was in there too maybe it wouldn't surprise me yeah but um, so let's let's zone in on the uh the on the one direction yeah so so this was around the time that our what makes you beautiful cover 
had just come out or had it just it, it had been out i don't know if it had just come out but it was like popular like that's yeah yeah it was it was popping off yeah dare i say that was like their song yeah yeah um and i remember we were standing on the carpet and we saw harry and niall like walk by and we're like oh my gosh it's a harry styles and niall horan we were like oh that's it's <laughs> the guys of one direction <laughs> two of them anyways and we like i remember like making eye contact with them and then they they stop and they go oh it's those girls from the video oh my god i forgot about this really yes no, they literally said they said oh my gosh it's i'm the, remembering now yeah they said, oh my gosh it's, it's the girls from from that video and then like we stopped and we like chatted for a little bit and they were like yeah like someone sent it to us and like we like loved it like that was so cool like you guys like did such a cool job like with our song like we really liked it and then we were like thanks <laughs> harry styles and niall horan yeah. and then we were like can we take a picture and then we have that photo that oh i love i love, I love that, that photo. photo um so yeah that was really cool again like what like harry styles at one point was like looked at us in the eyes and said you're those girls <laughs> looked us in the eyes said, you're those girls that did the video okay this also this whole event is leading me to another event that was not on our list perfect what is it the teen vogue young hollywood party oh so oh. we were guests of shanae grimes for this one um, which, you know, that was around when the, are you happy now video? Cause she directed that and she like brought us on the carpet, brought us to the party. And, uh, that whole party, that was like our first picture. This picture, this <laughs> we are 18 were we 18. Yeah. yeah. We were 18 years old. Had we even graduated yet? I don't think we had gotten. No, no we, we, had. We, had. we had, we had, we had barely, we had barely graduated high school. Yeah. We had just moved to Nashville. Like probably two months before that. Yeah. And our label flew us out to LA to have this music video directed by Sinead Grimes and then also to like give us both makeovers. So they literally <laughs> gave me, they made me they blonde. Blonde. Yeah, they, they made me blonde in one day and this had happened the day before. And then they said, you're going to the young, uh, Teen Vogue Young Hollywood party with Sinead. And the thing about the Teen Vogue Young Hollywood party is you purposely do not go with a manager or publicist. Yeah. Like that is, that is the unspoken or spoken rule. I'm not really sure of that party is you, for the young talent yes. and up and coming talent to mingle so, by themselves without management or. So anything. you're going in there with like these, with all of the like hottest young talent in Hollywood and they don't have their crew. They don't have their managers. They don't have their publicists. Like everybody is just like standing there. Like it's a high school party. Yeah. And but luckily Avery was there Yes, at the time. Avery, you know, um, go screw you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. um, uh, if this isn't real, we oh, give it yeah. back all the poses. That, that, um, yeah. So she was there and we had no, we knew her through like, she was another YouTube friends. creator. So she was there. We hung out with her and she was friends with Stephanie Scott, mm -hmm. who was on Disney at that point, I think. Yes. Um, and so we kind of hung out with them all night, but like <laughs> Hunger Games was, had just come out or it was no, about to come no, out. No, Megan. Here's, here's what had happened. I was such a Hunger Games fan that <laughs> I was on Hunger Games Tumblr just as Ooh. one, as one would be on like, T equivalent of like hunger games tiktok or like hunger games reddit yeah. like i was on hunger games tumblr so i knew who was cast in the film they hadn't i don't think they had started filming yet but i knew i knew that josh hutcherson. that josh hutcherson had been cast as Peta, and i see josh hutcherson he he was like kind of into you don't say that. He was. <laughs> he, he kept like coming back to like hang out. <laughs> I know. I know. And so and he, at this point he had been in like Bridge to Terabithia, which huge film. Incredible. <laughs> um, and you know, it's no, no managers, no nobody. And he was just chilling by himself or like yeah. just like with one other dude. And I like walk up to him and I say, hi, Josh. It's so nice to meet you. I 18 years old, like the biggest fan girl in the world. I'm like, it's so nice to meet you. Like, I'm so excited for your role in the Hunger Games. Congratulations on getting cast as PETA. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. But he was so nice. And he was like, oh, thank you so 
so much. Like, that's so nice. And we, like, chatted for a little bit. And, like, I got he's a photo. Like, coming, walking back up. He was he's a like, fun guy. He's like, what are you guys doing tonight? Yeah. He was, like, a <laughs> yeah. fun guy. Because we, we were all, like, the same age yeah. at this party. Like, that's literally how it feels or how it felt. Um, We saw a lot of Pretty Little Liars cast yes, night, too. Yes, we did. And another girl smoking that shook us to our core. Sarah Ooh. Highland. <gasps> oh, I forgot she was there. Yeah, Sarah Highland's smoking a cigarette was, we were rocked. You would think was, that we'd seen a ghost. Was Debbie Ryan there? Probably. Which is funny, because Debbie Ryan, like, actually, we eventually, like, ended up, like, seeing Being her decent. a lot and, like... We were friendly. We were yeah, very friendly. Like, and, like, we had each other's numbers for a minute. And, like, yeah. we'd, like, text, be like, oh, are you going to this event? Or going yeah. to this event? Or, like, whatever. Um... But yeah, the teen, and then another to end it up with Josh. He like, I remember when we were walking out, he was in like a Jeep of sort yeah. and he was like driving by. He was like, bye guys. Like, see you later. <laughs> like hanging out the side of his Jeep saying goodbye. <laughs> so, um, Josh Hutcherson, mm-hmm. good guy. Sweet guy. Sweet, sweet Josh. Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So sweet. Please. What did you just say? Um, sorry, we were just trying to figure out off mic here, like some other stories and I completely forgot about this one until just recently. Uh, so we had a showcase in LA at the Roxy at the Roxy and, um, Kylie Jenner was there. Kylie Jenner has heard bad for me. (laughs) (laughs) She, she's seen us sing it live. Kylie Jenner has seen our faces. This was like, this was Kylie Jenner before King Kylie, before King Kylie. Yeah. This was, um, she was Miss, in our dressing room. This was Misfit Sarah. Yeah. With Jaden. Yeah. And, and like all those people. If you know, you know. Yeah. Um, she was like in our dressing room at the Roxy. I completely forgot about that. Yeah. That is. <laughs> wow. Kylie Jenner has seen us with her, with her eyes. Yeah. What a thrill. That was a wild one. And then that was the, that was the same night afterwards. We went to um, In and Out, and we saw Russell Crowe. Was it? Yes. Cause think about the outfits. Mm, I'm positive it was that night. Yeah, we saw Russell Crowe after that. That wasn't the same night as the Golden Globes. Yes, it was. Oh well, there you go. Yeah, that was the same night we saw Russell Crowe at In and Out eating a burger in his tux after uh, the Golden Globes. But also that night. Or this might have been a different night at the Roxy. You're, I don't know that you're going to remember this one. Okay. Um, okay. Um, the guy who played Corey on That So Raven, like, wouldn't leave us alone. Do you remember that? <laughs> Do you, like, vaguely? <laughs> vaguely. <laughs> Why? We were, like, standing in the parking lot, like, waiting for our car. And, like, I just remember him just, like not leaving us alone <laughs> just like just like talking about like the most random stuff and we were like okay Corey from that so raven i, mean, I don't know this man's name sorry to this man um but yeah, yeah oh my gosh i forgot about yeah. that the roxy's a weird place man a lot of weird stuff happens in the Roxy. yeah hollywood's a weird place in general yeah Another awards show um, where we were nominated Nominated was the Teen Choice Awards, where we were nominated for what? Choice. I think that was the Choice Country song. Choice Country song. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of forget about that. That's a, yeah. that's a big deal. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah, we came. We were obviously living in Nashville at that time. So we flew out to L.A. to go because that was really cool. To, like, walk the carpet as a nominee is always really cool. So, um, I remember there were just, like, a lot of really big celebs on that carpet. Yeah. That was cool. We saw the Kardashians in person there. Yes, we did. And that was a crazy experience. Like, when you see the Kardashians, it was Kim. It was all of them, I think, wasn't it? I think it it was. Yeah. Well, okay, hold on. We'd seen Courtney before. We, Courtney, we saw at Jingle Ball. We were, we were like right next to her on the red oh, carpet. Yeah. And one thing about Courtney Kardashian is she is tall. No, Chloe. Oh my gosh, Chloe. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. It was Chloe that we saw. Mm-hmm. And like, I remember just being like, she is very she tall. She is tall. Oh, okay. I remember that. Cause we walked right by her. Yes. She was like, we and were like really, okay. Yeah. yeah we were right next mm-hmm. to her in the red carpet lineup. But this, that was at Jingle Ball. This was at Teen Choice. It was Courtney and 
Kim, I think, that were there. Maybe Chloe was there. But I just remember being we'll so to, shook. We'll have to, like, go back and look and see, like, yeah. who all went. I just remember being so shook at their bodies. Like, yeah. seeing Kim Kardashian's body in real life is... It's it's crazy. Like, yeah. her body is crazy. Yeah. Like, she's so small, but her butt, but her so butt is so big. Yeah. Like, it's... And she's so short. Yeah. Like, it, it was wild like I, I remember being struck with yeah. seeing kim kardashian's body in real life that was just like a really good teen choice carpet like i feel like a lot of that's where my picture with zendaya is from <laughs> my favorite photo me and zendaya totally um britney spears was there that year too yeah we didn't see her like on the carpet or anything but like we stayed for the show and we saw her like accept her award or was that the Radio Disney Music Awards that you're thinking of? Ooh, I don't know. Uh, they're all blurring together. I know. Um, we we presented at the Radio Disney Music Awards. We did. Which I forget about a lot. That was, that was awesome. cool. And then also at the Teen Choice Awards, BB Rexa was sitting right behind us. <gasps> and oh my at this point, nobody knew who BB Rexa was. I was a big BB Rexa fan. I think we knew about her because. I I knew of her because she was on that Take Me Home song, the Cash Cash one. That's no, that's the only reason that we knew but her. But then remember we heard about how she got snubbed on the David Guetta song. No, how she sang on the Hey Mom, 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 Hey Mom. Mom oh Mom, yeah, but she wasn't on. She wasn't credited. Yeah, she wasn't credited, and she like wrote it. I'm pretty sure, and then yeah. she eventually ended up getting credit. Yeah, but I think that's w- what I knew of her at that point. Yeah, but, but she was there. Yeah, which was crazy, and I remember being like. Oh my gosh, BB Rexa is here. Is behind us. BB Rexa is behind us. I feel like we went to so many award shows in Nashville, but they all blurred together. Like I don't know if anything yeah. like really significant ever happened at them. Yeah, Nashville. We shared an elevator with Kane Brown. I remember. Do you yeah, that? that's like really the only like significant thing I remember. Yeah, <laughs> and like Nashville is like different than LA yeah. in the way of like. It doesn't feel so random. And like mm. these things like aren't as like crazy. I feel like in Nashville, it's almost more like professional in a way. Yeah. And you like, you see each other so, so much, much that yeah. it's like, Hey, like it's not like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it's completely different. Like all of our Nashville stuff wasn't crazy. Yeah. It wasn't. I mean, I'm sure if we really like, were asked the right question. I mean, the the Mary Kay when we were in charge of the Mary Kay. Oh, the Mary Kay three hundred and sixty can. That that was crazy. That was crazy. And also, I felt so ill prepared for that. Okay, so here's the situation: we were hired to be red carpet correspondents, which I know there's a lot of like discussion on how influencers are like taking over these professional journalistic positions. Yeah, and I agree i (laughs) understand i understand because we were hired by mary Kay to to host the 360 cam um live red carpet feed and we were given a week to prepare i mean it was but but we weren't they like the thing is though is i don't even were we given like who was gonna be there no we were not we were we weren't given who we were gonna be interviewing yeah we i think like right before there was like a publicist or something from Mary Kay, like right before the person would step up, they would be like, oh, it's so-and-so. But sometimes they wouldn't. Yeah. But like, literally, we interviewed Sharon Stone. We interviewed Pam Tillis too. Yeah. And like, for some reason, it just didn't connect with me. I think I was just trying to like think of questions or like, I don't, I don't even know, but like, Normally, I think people have earpieces. Earpieces, or they're prepped on, like, who's going. They get, you get, like, a book of, like, who's going. Yeah. Like, and we, yeah. we are not professional journalists or broadcast journalism, and we were literally just thrown to the wolves. Thrown to the wolves. But, I mean, everybody was, like, really, really nice. And I remember yeah. I remember being pretty well-versed, but... Because, because we like country music and we like yeah. pop culture. We, yeah. like, I don't think that there was anybody who we were, like... I don't know who this is and I don't know who to ask. Like, I don't know what to ask. And I think we pulled it off okay. But I do remember at the end of that night being like, man, I feel like I went into a test that I didn't study for. Yes. Which and is I didn't crazy. know, and I didn't know I had to study for like, it. Like, they took a gamble on us because it was mm-hmm. live too. Like, it wasn't like most, if you're on a red carpet interviewing, which we have done before, like we were interviewing for the, um, American Music Awards. Yeah. Um, and we've like interviewed other red carpet situations. We've been in that situation before is the thing. But usually it's like 
they'll take clips yeah. of like wh- who you interviewed and like which interview was best and then they'll edit it together for or a video like, or for like the american music awards they we would be off and then they'd say okay like you're about to come back on from xyz and xyz is gonna walk up yes. you know like you were yeah. it was very like yeah this is what it wasn't so on the fly it was on the fly yeah live crazy yeah that was crazy but we interviewed some really big people then and that was insane but that's the thing about nashville is i feel like everybody's just really nice and like yeah welcoming and understanding and yeah but looking back (laughs) now like geez we thank goodness we did a good job thank goodness we if i was alone i would have crumbled (laughs) oh oh and it was rapid fire it was like an hour of us just like standing there like one person after another after another after another yeah we'll have to post some photos of like who we interviewed but also i do remember just i think it was just that the first year they did it so like they had kinks we had kinks like it was it it, it ended up being fine but i remember not being super proud of myself on that one like i was yeah. proud but not <laughs> yeah and i think with that that's kind of just a, a handful of the most random stories that we have i'm sure we have a ton more um if you have any questions, I mean, I feel like if you want to see, like, drop a comment. Like, I think you should end it on who you saw running in 12 South a few months ago. Oh, this was recent. Yeah. <laughs> just just, just end it. <laughs> uh, Dave Franco. She passed. She was walking in 12 South. And- I did a double take and I was like, this is the most beautiful man I've ever seen. Like, beautiful. Like, as in, like, <laughs> his skin was glowing his eyebrows were gorgeous like he was beautiful his face was structured and i was like this is a gorgeous man and then i like double took and i was like dave Dave franco Franco. so thanks for listening guys and we'll see you next week for another episode of noted bye